and welcome to episode 10 of the Maxi CNC Rotor Build. And today we're going to be making some of the stepper motor mountings. Now I'll first show you the stepper motors that I'm using. Now this is a standard NEMA 24. Okay. Uh, this is slightly larger than a NEMA 23. And this is uh, the normal high powered output one dual shaft. And this one is an ultra high powered one. Uh, believe it or not, um, under normal running conditions this one runs at 36 volt or on a 36 volt system and at 5 amps 36 volt you see on there oh it's quite heavy actually <laughs> uh, it will develop um, 3.5 newton meters of torque and of course being a, an electric motor that is uh, and certainly a, a stepper motor this will produce that amount of torque from you know from start off okay all the way up to I think this will top out at uh, about 3000 rpm so that is the torque available right through the range and, and you can see that look at the size of the shaft okay it's a d-shaped shaft to take the extra torque. Now this will do the same work as a NEMA, a small NEMA 34. And of course NEMA 34 the output shaft is half inch and you know it's just overkill for a CNC rotor of this size. Um, you know these will are more than man enough to do anything the, you know this size rotor would require. So what I'm doing today is a fairly simple setup to house these. Now all we need to do is make bracketry to support these okay and all the bracketry needs to do is hold it the right distance out okay and it's under a twisting motion. Uh, nothing else. So it, you know, it needs to be just he you know, a heavy duty enough bracketry then to cope with that. So what I'm going to do is on the X, I've cut material here. This is six millimeter thick, um, good grade aluminium, the same sort of grade as they used to do aircraft frames with okay so it's good stuff quite strong so this is going to be set up on the top that way around backwards and then I'm going to cut a slice out of this which is the same material and um, Because there's a recess here, a boss, I'm going to have to cut, I think it's 36 millimeters. I'm going to have to cut a boss out or a receiving hole then, 36 millimeter in here. Um, of course, it's going to be mounted up that way. So I'm just going to take a slice out of this uh, and that way as well. So it'll probably make two, which will then you know, mount on this bracket here. You know, we've got 12 millimeter of, well actually that'll be that way, right? You know, there's 12 millimeter of aluminium here. You know, it'll, it's not going to flex, it's not going to do anything, but bear in mind it's under a twist in motion, like this, and this is, I've used it before, um, in similar circumstances and it's been absolutely fine. Um, 
I could put a piece of 12 millimeter plate up there, but there's no need to put use it. You know, it's just adding extra weight, I suppose. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I'm, I, I'm using this type of system for holding the stepper motor for the Z and the both Y axes. Now the the X axis is going to be a little different. Um, and I know I said at the very beginning I wasn't going to use a CNC machine to do uh, any of the work. Um, but on this occasion, um, I just want to do a fancy little bracket uh, to go on the end there. And uh, I'm going to use my little mini mill over there just to cut a nice bracket out. Simple bracket, but a nice bracket just to say, oh, you know, there is one CNC pad on here. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we'll get on with that. A bit two videos back um, I did mention that I cut plate aluminium with a, a drop saw which is normally used and designed for cutting wood materials however it is possible to cut through aluminium plate now I don't recommend this for everybody uh, you've really got to be careful and you must have the right type of equipment to to do it so this is a two kilowatt motor it's a Ryobi so it's you know not top of the range sort of model it's a set of a decent handyman tool I'm using a DeWalt um, portable bench drop saw bench which I find is probably the best on the market now the secret for cutting aluminium is this blade. It's a very good quality wood saw blade with tungsten carbide tips. And I'll bring you in for a closer look at it. Um, so this is tungsten carbide tipped. It's a fairly new bl blade and it's a fine tooth blade. I can't actually see what is it. It's a 10 inch blade. Um, how many teeth? It doesn't actually say how many teeth but uh, it's, a, it's a fine te tooth blade. Um, now I use it for cutting aluminium but uh, you know I cannot recommend that you do. I'm just showing you what I do. And if you're very careful it should go something like this. All right. Securely fasten the plate aluminium down on the table. I've got a block of wood which extends the clamping mechanism ability further out closer to the blade. Um, you don't really want to get your fingers anywhere near this at all if you so choose to do it. It should go something like this very very quietly. Start it up and feed the blade in. Don't lift the blade up out of the cut until it's stopped. And it gives you a perfect cut. So the secret behind it is clamp it down firmly, then take the cut very slowly through and do not bring the blade and do not bring the blade back out of the cut until it's stopped turning. Uh, 
I'm going to give you probably the best tip and advice that I've ever given on YouTube. And that is, don't lend your tools out to your kids, your friends or your family. Because if you look at the teeth on this, Not very good, is it? Totally destroyed. So that's what happens if you lend your tools out to people that you think they know what they're doing. And of course, they don't. And the result is rather a nasty mess. So luckily, not all is lost. Um, now, I'm going to go against the grain here a little. I did intend to make this CNC router uh, just with powered hand tools, but uh, now that's uh, impossible because it's time of day on the weekend now where uh, the shops where I could buy uh, another one of those from is closed or would be closed by the time I got there so uh, I'm now going to have to resort to a different method and that is using my little CNC mill so uh, <laughs> here we go